In this last section of our study of A2 oscillation, we have looked at oscillation as a system. So we have looked at what is uh, simple harmonic motion and the definition of simple harmonic motion. We have looked at how to describe simple harmonic motion using kinematics like displacement, velocity, acceleration, and we also talk about energy. So what I didn't mention to you about energy is energy oh, energy will be lost to the environment. Although I say that most of the time the energy is conserved, kinetic energy and potential energy, I purposely didn't say that. Sometimes we have this good old thing called friction and friction will steal energy from your system. Okay, So in this recording, I'm going to talk about that loss in energy first and that would be, if you're following the notes, it will be here first. Okay, So I'm going to talk about damp oscillation. So ready or not, let's go. So damped oscillation, whenever you see the word damping or damped oscillation, it doesn't mean that it's wet, okay? It has nothing to do with how wet something is, but it actually shows a loss in energy of an oscillating system. So I'll write that down now for you. Okay, so it's the loss in energy of an oscillating system or a simple harmonic motion due to resistive forces such as friction and air resistance. So I'll just put uh, such as friction. Okay. And when it comes to this loss in energy, we have quite a few types. Okay. So when you want to think about this loss in energy, right, it's because you cannot stop uh, energy from being lost to friction because friction is always there as long as two surfaces is touching each other. So if you think about this, we can classify that into different, different types of damping. So right now you will see uh, we have a few graphs. The first one, it's the one that you commonly think about when you think about damping. You will notice that the amplitude actually decreases gradually. So if I plot out the envelope for the amplitude, so let me draw for you and see, for the red graph, this is the envelope of the amplitude. So it decreases slowly. So this red graph is what we call under damping. And there are a few properties for anything that is under damped. Okay? So imagine I have a system, okay? maybe a swing, and then I push the swing, so the swing begins to oscillate. But each time, that swing has a smaller and smaller amplitude. You don't know what I'm talking about? Let me show you a video. Okay, so here's a video of someone that hopefully is familiar. Okay, and she is on the swing. So now let's look at her as she oscillates. Okay, so think about her amplitude and how high her feet is traveling. And as we speed up the video, do you notice that her amplitude is decreasing because there's friction here uh, in the joints. So slowly, slowly, the amplitude will drop and there's loss in energy. So because of that loss in energy, we can classify under damp. So this is called under damping using a few properties. The first one will be a gradual reduction in amplitude. Okay, so when we say gradual, I mean that this amplitude is decreasing over time. So gradual reduction in amplitude over time. Sometimes um, we can actually call this an exponential reduction because the shape is the shape of an exponential e to the power of negative x shape. So this is your exponential envelope. It decreases over time. So you will swing, swing, and then your amplitude will be less and less because you will lose energy to the environment. Okay, so what else about this under damping? There are two properties. The first one is the slow decrease in amplitude. And the second point, I just want to write this as point one. The second point is, if you look at the period, the period is actually more or less constant, almost constant. So if you look at this, this is T, right? So this is the, this, this is the entire period from here to here. This is T. And if you look at this point, this point is 2t, and you can see that the period is more or less the same width. So the width of the yellow, yellow first t, and the width of the purple, which is t to 2t, the period remains the same. That will be the second property. Okay, so I've written it down. Frequency and period remains constant, at least for the first few oscillation. Okay. So this two is enough for you to tell that this is under damp or uh, in CIE syllabus, uh, it is more commonly known as light 
damping. So it's just a sprinkle, just a little bit of removal of energy over time. So for every swing, you take away a little bit of energy. For every oscillation, we take away a little bit of energy. Pretty cool. This is light damping. So another damping that you can think about is the critical damping. Wow, so drama. Why did we use the word critical? Okay, so critical damping is for this orange line. Hmm. Maybe I shall make the box orange. Okay, so critically damp. When we say critical damping, right, what is the underlying idea? The amplitude or this displacement will return to zero as soon as possible. Because the energy I remove so quickly, huh, the spring wants to go back to equilibrium as soon as possible. So this is the idea of critical damping. I'll write down that property now. Okay, so the system return to equilibrium position as soon as possible. You may be wondering where is equilibrium position? Here la, this part here. This part is x is equal to zero because this is x in let's say meter. So here is your equilibrium position. Okay, the x-axis. So it returns back to the x-axis as soon as possible. All right. So I think for you to visualize this, maybe I'll give you an example. Critical damping is often happens uh, whenever we have shock absorber. So if let's say you drive a car or those motorcycle, right, there's a shock absorber. And if you don't know how, how it looks like, let me show you. Okay, so you can see there's a spring here. This is attached to a wheel. This is probably one of those motorcycles that, you know, looks a bit sporty, can fly over high bumps. So whenever this motorcycle flies over a bump, okay, you need a spring there to remove the energy from the system because you go up, you come down, you crash, right? You don't want it to spoil the structure of the wheel or the motorbike. So we will install something like this to absorb the force, okay? When we say absorb the force means you want this to oscillate or vibrate, so to speak, to disperse the energy. But also at the same time, you kind of don't want your bike to oscillate. Imagine if your bike is light damping. Imagine if your bike... Amplitude change like the red graph. Wow, so tired leh. You go above the hum and then go like that, like that, like that, like that. You know, you oscillate for a long, long time. I think it's not very good for people with motion sickness. Like, it's like you play Minecraft and you didn't turn off view bobbing. So as you walk, you bob, 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 bob. I mean, I don't know about you, but I get motion sickness. So critical damping is generally very useful. Whenever we have a system, okay, that is consistently disturbed and you want to remove the energy from the system. So we put a spring here, okay, to remove energy from the system. We don't want... Another example is this, or rather this. Ah, so if you have a door, okay, you know the door, like those uh, door without the, the lock one, okay, we will always install this thing here because we don't want the door to slam. So this is actually a shock absorber. So if let's say there is no lock and the door is free to oscillate, the door will actually open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close a few times. And after a while, it gets a bit annoying. So we'll install this here so that the door can close as soon as possible. So this is example of the kind of shock absorber that you want. You will return to uh, origin as soon as possible. Critical damping. Another example of a critical damping is that we will install this kind of spring on structures like buildings. You may be wondering, why do we need to install this on building? Because, you know, certain countries, right, with strong winds and uh, strong earthquakes, okay, you want to prevent that from happening, they will create a damper inside the building. So let me show you how that looks like. Okay, so what you see in front of you is called Taipei 101. In Taiwan, you may be like, wow, teacher, I long time never travel because of pandemic. You and me both, okay? So this one is Taipei 101, or very tall structure. So Taiwan is known for its strong typhoon wind. So they get very, very strong wind. So imagine you get strong wind blowing, and then what happens to a very tall building when you blow? It will sway and oscillate. And this is not good, right? Can you imagine if you are staying here and then the building sway and oscillate? And then after that, what will happen? The structures will break, la, exceed some limit of, you know, you exceed some uh, 
limit of uh, tense or ultimate tensile stress. Lah. So this thing will break and we want to avoid that from happening. So what they did was to install something called a tune mass damper. So if you're interested, uh, I will link this article down in the description box. So what the tune mass damper is, is this very massive, meaning it has a large mass, gold color ball. You may be asking, does the color matter? No, but this is a predominantly Chinese place. So we want it to look gold so that we can sell it as a tourist attraction. Big brain, ah, these people, big brain. Make it gold color, then tourist attraction. You make it not so nice, oh, then it becomes part of the building maintenance unit. No, 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 tourist attraction. So this tune mass damper actually looks like this. Oh, so you can see the balcony here. People can walk around. So how does it work? If the building sway to the left, the tune mass damper will sway to the right to counterbalance. It's as if like you're about to fall down and then you reach your hand outwards to in the opposite direction to counterbalance your fall. So if, let's say, for example, I push you to the left, you will instinctively lean towards the right to counterbalance the push. So it's the same thing with the building. If the building gets blown to the left, the tune mass damper, because it is hung on cables, will oscillate or will stay there due to its inertia and pull the building back. So it removes that mechanical oscillating energy from the system so that the building doesn't oscillate. Huh? That is no good. All right. So this is how the damper looks like. And uh, you can actually watch different, different uh, pictures if you Google this on Google. Okay, so out of curiosity, I played the video and you can see that this happens during the Sichuan earthquake in 2008. So notice that the damper is actually being pulled. Of course, the camera person is not doing a very good job holding its place, but you can see that the damper is actually oscillating. Look at the side of the structure you see here. It is being pulled left and right as the building or the earthquake oscillates the building. So this one is all damping we want to remove energy from the system as soon as possible and if can we prefer critical damping when it comes to structures like this because we don't want it to break so we want the building to return back to the vertical equilibrium position as soon as possible and finally we have over damping over liao means what uh? too much liao you look at this system this blue color line takes a long time to go back to equilibrium position so this versus critical damping where it goes back to equilibrium position as soon as possible this over damping takes a long time to go back to equilibrium position because you remove so much energy from the system the system don't even have enough energy to go back to equilibrium position so I'll write down that defining characteristic for you so the oscillating system returns to equilibrium very slowly takes its own sweet time. Okay, so examples of this are your spring mattress. You don't want to jump on your, you know, get on your bed and your bed just wobble like that as if you're on a water bed. Sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's not, okay? You also don't want to fall on the spring and then the spring immediately rebound back. That's a very hard, H-A-R-D, bed. So we want for you to sink into the mattress. So displacement sink into the mattress and then the mattress slowly come back to equilibrium position okay and then you can fall asleep should be a great thing to do so these are different types of system the more popular one is obviously light damping because we can have some calculation here so normally what pass here questions or what you need to know is less of the equation because the equation around these graphs is further further physics okay so we need to know the pattern and the type of damping number one we you have to be able to identify them from the graph drawn for you so normally when it comes to light damping we introduce some form of small resistive forces maybe for example if ellie is if miss ellie wants to increase the damping on her swing she can open an umbrella and then this amplitude will decrease faster Okay, so normally light damping is we introduce a resistive force. Okay, for critical and over damping, we have another system inside the system, like for example, the, the gold color tune mass damper to remove the energy even quicker. Or we install, you know, the door closing damper 
So we want to remove energy as soon as possible because to maintain the integrity of the structure. We don't want the structure to break up for no reason. That one is no good. All right. So be able to identify the damping and understand the key characteristic. Light damping, there's a slow reduction in amplitude and the period is the same. So mention both. If they say state and explain whether the damping is light or not. Okay. Number two is critical damping. Critical damping is ASAP. Returns to equilibrium position as soon as possible. You are running out of time. We need you to not oscillate and go back to equilibrium. Rest over damping is just chill. La. You take your own sweet time to return to equilibrium position very slowly. So hopefully that makes sense. Identify the damping, know the characteristic, and also know what damping is, which is taking energy away from the system. The more we remove, we go from light to critical to over damping. So to help you pull all of this together, here is a model of different types of damping. This one is for light damping. Okay, and then you can see there's this damping factor. So obviously there's an equation to calculate this. Otherwise, you can't have this on GeoGebra, right? But if you look at what happens when I increase the damping factor, so let's say for example, the Miss Ellie on the swing, she opens the umbrella. Ding, ding, ding. So you increase the damping, you can see that you get less oscillation. So if I increase the damping factor more and more and more, and you observe the graph, Okay, eventually the graph will return to equilibrium position as soon as possible, like this. This is already considered crit critical damping. You don't even get one oscillation, okay? So it will be something, I guess, like that. But you see the damping factor, I can only increase to 100, like no more already. But you can tell how it will return to equilibrium as soon as possible. Lessen the damping, you will get more complete cycles. Increase the damping, eventually you will return to equilibrium position as soon as possible and reach critical damping. All right, so that's it about removing energy from an oscillating system and damping. I hope you learned something today and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.